before you even open your so when you are setting up your zoom call or go to meeting or microsoft webex whatever it might be you want to think about how can i present myself in the best way possible and and the appropriateness may change with the particular venue, with the particular occasion. But I think that what we're gonna talk about today will be some tips that will work in a, in a work environment, that will work for job interviews, and it will even work for presentations that we deliver virtually. So just to give you an idea of, of where we're going today, the, make sure I'm operating here, there we go. There we go. There, there are basically three chunks that we're going to approach today. We're going to talk a little bit of background lighting and, and sound, and then we're going to talk about camera angles, how to set up a camera, and some of the mistakes that people make. And then we'll also talk about your physical appearance, which may change depending on the occasion, depending on the audience, depending on the, the intent of that particular virtual engagement. But all these kinds of things you have control over. You don't have control over how the other individuals look on the call or how they present themselves but you do ultimately, we ultimately have control over how we present ourselves. Now today we're going to try to make this as interactive as possible. If you have questions, go ahead and put them in the chat. We've built in a couple of times where we'll take question breaks and kind of reflect a little bit on, on the learning that we've made up to that point. And Jackie Cam Blackard is here joining me and she's going to be helping me monitor the chat. And then we've got a couple activities. We're going to make uh, a number of you experts today and ask you to share some of your expertise about setting up a virtual call, setting up a virtual situation and environment. All right, well, let's go ahead and jump into that first one. Let's talk a little bit about background. You've heard in real estate, location, location, location. In a virtual meeting or presentation, it's location, location, and the background. So ideally, and a lot of you, it appears, are all are working from home and, and joining us from home, which is great. The think about finding a space that has a, a wall that's fairly blank or uncluttered with a neutral color. And that allows you then to stand out and to be the focus of that attention. So avoid some of those visual distractors that we've identified here. The things like the dramatic colors, or maybe there's a, a, a beautiful, huge painting that's gone and been in your family for generations. And I'll tell you, if that's your background, we're going to pay more attention to that than we are to you. So try to declutter or unclutter your background as much as possible. And you know, you can see in my background here, I do have a print, but I'm showing just a portion of that. So that gives a little bit of visual appearance Peel, something kind of breaks up that background. You can see over my left shoulder, I've got a couch with a couple of uh, pillows on it. Again, try to inject a little bit of color there just to, to create some visual appeal. Let's take a look at these, these three situations here. So the gentleman on the left has got a bookcase behind him and is fairly neutral colors. It looks like a white colors with a, a lighter colored brick in there, but it's very cluttered. And it doesn't take much time at all. We're paying more attention to his bookcase and the fact it's not very well organized than we are to him. The gentleman on the right, however, we can, it appears that he's broadcasting from his bedroom. And even the fact that he's got a pet there in the background, which is potentially an awe moment, awe, but it's going to be a distractor. And you can see for him, it's a distraction as well. Even without the dog there, we've got his full print behind him, his headboard is pillowed. Again, that's going to become more of a distraction to his viewers, the people on the call, than potentially him even. And I put up the, the one there in the center that's become kind of a, a cliche background. The, I'm not sure, maybe a social setting might be an appropriate place for that, but it's just not, it looks kind of unprofessional and is probably not something you want to have and certainly in, a, in a, a meeting or business virtual call. Instead, Find again that neutral background. The gentleman here has used a little bit of the blur effect, which eliminates some of the precision and, and makes it a little easier, a little more difficult rather, to focus on what he's talking about. But also notice his clothing choice. So he's got a neutral background and the clothing choice, real simple t-shirt, allows him to stand out from that background. And we'll talk a little bit about clothing. That's gonna be one of the, the important elements of that as well, is just how you dress so that you can distinguish yourself from the background. 
Now, we touched on this just a moment ago, I believe, the idea that virtual backgrounds are readily available. A lot of them are available for free. Um, you can purchase virtual background packages, and, and the quality is getting better. But almost all of them, in my experience, have some sort of what we call halo effect. So if you move one way or the other, there's a little bit of a drag, a little bit of a, a black line behind you the direction you're moving towards that makes it obvious that you're in front of a virtual background and it's not a deal breaker by any means but if you do choose to go virtual and a number of you have the uh, again think about what's behind you think about what's appropriate the occasion think again about the ultimate question we're asking today what's the image that i want to project now the blurred background has become very popular and, and i'm I, I like it a lot the if i had a choice i would be blurred the background Background of my shot would be blurred today as well, so so you wouldn't see necessarily exactly what the print is or the what those colors are in, on my couch. But the blurred background probably is a good all-purpose background. Um, you can see a couple of examples on the left-hand side of the slide here, the right-hand side rather of the slide, and it just eliminates potential distractions even more. Now, I do want to talk about, and Willie, do you mind if we pick on you for just a moment here? I do want to talk about the Toastmasters virtual background. So Willie Blue is using that behind wow. him. The Willie, I like your clothing choice. A lot of times people, when they use those Toastmasters backgrounds, aren't thinking about the clothing choice. Clearly, you did. And you stand out from the background. It's clear that we're looking at Willie Blue here. Um, there are some dark green-ish Postmasters background, similar to the bar at the bottom of the slide here. And people who use that, it's not a bad background by any means, but people who use that forget that they need to wear lighter colored, colored clothing so they stand out from that. So Willie, thanks for letting us use you as a, a, an unintentional or un, unworn guinea pig here. But you've actually set that shot up very, very nicely in terms of the color and the, and the background. All right, a couple of script notes. Throughout this presentation, we'll have a couple of script notes, some just additional information, additional tips. The If you are, are projecting from home, if you are on the virtual call from home, you can use any piece of furniture, any room feature in your house. In a moment, I'm gonna show you a setup that I had for a while. Um, it's changed now, but I basically moved a couple things, a couple pieces of furniture in this room. I called it my studio, jokingly, because basically it was a storage room, but nobody could see what was being stored in there. So you can create this space the way you want, with the chairs, with your background, whatever kind of information that you or, or images you want to have behind you. Do pay attention to your color scheme a little bit. You, If you have some sort of small accent piece, again, like the print that's over my left shoulder, that can be kind of nice. It just kind of breaks up the background a little bit. And ultimately, and you're going to hear me say this many times, do a test run. Get on a Zoom ahead of time and, and look see how your background is composed, if it's the way that you want it to be, if it's relatively clutter free. So ultimately you are the focus on that screen, not whatever's behind you. Let's talk a little bit about lighting. So we've talked about finding a good spot, a good background, neutral, someplace that maybe it would allow you to a virtual, use a virtual background as well. But lighting is very important. And ultimately what you're trying to do with your lighting is to eliminate unflattering shadows. Overhead lighting is horrendous and fluorescent lights are even worse. They cast very, very unflattering shadows. So I am in a room now that does have an overhead light, but I choose not to use that. There are a lot of lighting systems out there now. I hate that phrase, lighting system. Uh, ring lights, those kinds of things are all becoming very inexpensive, very reasonable. And you can see, you can find ones as large as the, the woman in the the image here on the slide, or you can find ones that would fit a phone if you use phone for your virtual calls, or a tablet, or a laptop, or, or a computer monitor. They can click to all of those. Basically, you want to put the light source in front of you, directly in front of you, not necessarily as close as the, the woman in the, the image here on the slide, but she is turned that down so it's not blinding her, first of all, nor is it washing out her features. So if she cranked that up a little bit, it would wash her out, that bright, bright direct light. So actually, I'm going to show you with my ring light what that looks like. And I become redder and redder as the light becomes brighter and brighter, and typically not very flattering. So let's see if I can find where I was before. So put the light source directly in front of you. 
but then play with the, the temperature, as it were, of the light. The, if you are sitting in front of a window so that you are facing an open window, not, not open so breezes are coming through, but so the light is coming through, that natural light is good. The trouble with natural light is it's inconsistent. What it looks like in the morning may be different with, than what it looks like in the afternoon. And it's hard to get a good balance. A ring light can, can allow you to balance the, the lighting. It's more difficult to do with a window. The, and as I mentioned, say no, no to overhead lights and particularly fluorescent lights. Now, let's say that you have a, a bright open window in your, in your home that you want to use instead of sitting in front of it facing it. What happens if I turn my chair around and the window is behind me? That's actually something that you want to avoid because that creates what's called backlighting. And backlighting illuminates essentially the back of your head and puts your face in shadows. And so that's not a, a particularly complimentary image as well. Now behind me, is a floor lamp, and we'll revisit this floor lamp in a little bit. What the floor lamp is positioned to do is so that I block it, but it also creates some, some backlighting that distinguishes me from my background. So actually the, the features of my shoulders and my head and my neck stand out more because of that backlighting. I've, I've got it on a three-way bulb. It's on the lowest setting, the lowest setting bulb, but it gives me enough light to set me apart. That in combination with my ring light allows me to be well lighted from the front as well also. So be just be conscious of the, the lighting that you're using. Now get creative. The I've used a floor lamp, I've used it in front of me as well, a desk lamp, so you don't have to go out and buy a ring lamp. Again, ring lamps are becoming much more reasonable, but there are a lot of different options. You can get creative and no one can see what your lighting source is, remember that. So if it's an open flame with, uh, tin foil around it, and again, that's not a recommendation. The, uh, nobody's gonna see that. All they're gonna see is the, the light that reflects on your face. So let me show you a situation that I set up. This was Jeff Hanna's studio. Basically, it was a storeroom, as, and I'm not there now, but if, if you would watch me on a call at that time, you wouldn't realize that my bicycle was a mere three feet from my right hand, and that I've got all kinds of stacks of boxes on the other side of the camera. But all they saw was what I had composed. So I started with my chair. I figured what height I wanted to be. Actually, I had a small desk I had there, but I did not put it in the schematic here. And then I had a music stand that I raised to a certain level and put my laptop on that. And we'll talk a little bit about where you want that camera to be. So not so much where you want the laptop to be, but where you want the camera on the laptop to be. And then I started building around that. So the first thing that I did, one of the first things I did was to purchase a rickety old ladder. I would not in my life climb this ladder. It was wooden and old and very unstable, but it was the right height for me to put a lighted mirror, makeup mirror on. Actually, that was a gift from somebody. I, I didn't take the hint, but I used it for a for my lighting source. And so that allowed me, the makeup mirror allowed me to make some adjustments to the intensity of the light. And then behind that, I had said floor lamp. And again, three-way bulb, I had it set at the lowest level. So the floor lamp was more ambient light. The room that I was in had an overhead light, but I turned it off. I didn't even have it on. So the, the lamp about six to eight feet away created an ambient light. And then the makeup mirror created the more specific higher intensity, but not, not glaring light. So nobody saw this. And actually, until I've shared this with you now, nobody even knows what Jeff Hanna's studio looked like. But it didn't matter. All that mattered was how I was presented, how I came across. So there's hope. Don't think you have to have the latest in technology. Put things together that you have available for you. So get creative with those light sources. These are some of the script notes here. One of the things that I've seen that works really well, if you do use a table lamp or a floor lamp for one of your lighting sources or your lighting source, try to go to a daylight LED bulb. They're just less intense. They are a, a warmer bulb, a create a warmer light, and sometimes that can you can make a, a, a pretty large difference in how you're illuminated. And you've heard me say this already once, test run, do a test run, test your lighting. So a lot of times when you join a call, whether it's Zoom or Microsoft 
uh, teams, there's an opportunity to look at yourself before you actually join the meeting. Mm -hmm. Minimally, take that time to take a look at your background, to take a look at your lighting and, and make adjustments. If you can, you know, you can get a basic free basic Zoom account and just kind of play with it a little bit and, and test the background. Although we're going to talk more about camera angles as well. You can test those as well. So the, the idea of, of having a good background having good lighting that illuminates you in, in healthy ways, in ways that don't cast unflattering shadows. That's ultimately what we're going for. All right, Jackie, we need a couple experts, a couple experts on the call who might be able to do a critique for us. Sandra, would you like to be a, one of our experts? And if so, please unmute yourself. And John, would you like to be another expert? soon as we get some sort of verbal confirmation. Yes. <laughs> oh, there she is. All right, very good. The And who else do we really looking for? Um, John. Jeff, there was a question about side lighting. Okay, okay. Let's hang on to that. We'll, we'll come back to that in just a moment. Well, Sandra, let's, you're the expert here. Let's think about background, think about lighting. Give your critique of the, the, the woman on the screen here, on the slide. What's, what's good? What could be done differently? It's difficult to see her face. Okay. She doesn't look like she's looking at us. She looks like she's distracted. And we have a lot of light from her window. Okay. What about the lighting from the window? What do you think about that? It's terrible. I, I, I think his, her window needs to have, she needs to pour her blind down. Okay, okay. somehow it's, it's very, very bright, absolutely. Somebody said it was terrible. Why, what was your thought there? The person who said it's terrible, please. Uh, that might've been me, Sherry. Okay, Sherry. I, um, so when I look at this, um, there's so much light coming in from the one side and, and I agree a hundred percent because that uh, I participated in a, a training and I had a lot of backlight behind me and I hung up a towel because I was sitting down in a chair to block that light because I could then capture, you know, it, I wasn't looking like I was either going to fade out or where, go, you know, just was, they couldn't see anything except the background. Right. So it really blocked a lot of the light. And then I did turn on, it was actually a pretty weak overhead light that lighted me because I've yeah. got two windows in this room. So it's tricky and it's, it's, it's outside light. Um, so, so yeah, trying to figure out what you want to do there. And you, and you make a great point. You reiterate what we, we mentioned a little bit ago. It's, it's natural light is good, but it's hard to direct it. It's hard to, to balance it. Um, so with, with the woman we're looking at here, that light is coming in from one side. It's coming in from her left-hand side, which means that her right-hand side, you can see it already, is going to be in the shadows. The, the camera is facing her. Now, she could simply move so that she's looking directly at the window or the windows, you know, directly in front of her. But again, I, I go back to what you said, Sandra, it's, it's too bright at this point. She needs to pull some shades down and, and maybe, you know, open shades a little bit to create some of that, that balance. Uh, well, very well, what, we have the two of you on. Let's have you take a look at another one. What do you think about this individual's background and lighting? Sherry, Sandra? I think she should blur, blur her background because you want to read what's on that bullet board. Yeah, yeah. I I agree a hundred percent. I can I can actually see the first line over there on the big bulletin board, and then I'm like, oh, what are those diplomas in the background? What does she have a or whatever they are? I'm I'm looking at everything else, and then there's something up in that left hand corner that's distracting. Do you even realize there's a person in that picture, in that image? <laughs> we're so busy looking at what's behind her. But yeah, we're trying to read what's on the whiteboard. 
know, I suppose the diplomas give her some credibility, but we're trying to figure out well, where she gets those diplomas. Anybody else? Any other feedback on on uh, the setup for this lady? What what is good is she's looking straight at us, so there's eye okay. contact there, which is very good. good. Very good. Yes, yeah, so get, get the illusion of eye contact. We're assuming she's looking at a camera. Very good. What else? What else do you notice? I think the lighting's good. Okay. Okay. What do you think about her lighting here? Anybody else? Yeah, the backlighting is is uh, good, and you can see her face because whatever the lighting is in front of her is is uh, in good. It's it's not uh, too bright and not too dull. Yeah. So that's a good point. I'm thinking it's side lit too much. Side lit. She's okay. got it a little bit bright from one side, and it's and she put her face in shadow. Yep. Yep. So on her left hand side, you can see she's got a side light that's brightening that. Right. Exactly. It's a little too side right in the corner and it's cluttered those are the big two things i see yeah. Yeah. good yeah. call good call you guys are the experts i would suggest that maybe she needs some direct lighting in front of her and that might eliminate yes. some of that shadowing on her what would be her right hand side because she's got i'm guessing she probably has an open window up to her left but i agree with you she either needs to do a, a virtual background or a blur background or maybe just move that whiteboard or whatever is behind her so but i, I appreciate your i think it was you willie said that because her background is as light colored as it is, she stands out more. Again, she's made some good clothing choices here. It allows her to her frame to stand out and be distinguished in the background a little bit. Nice job, Walsh. We're done here. You guys got it. It's been a pleasure talking with you. Thanks very much for your <laughs> no, well, let's, let's Let's move on and see if we can come up with anything else here for you. Very nice. Nice job. All right, so let's talk a little bit about sound, sound and noise in particular, and as the same way that we want to use lighting, good effective lighting to eliminate the distracting, flattering, unflattering shadows, we want to eliminate noises and sounds, sounds that can be distracting to me, as well as sounds and noises that can be distracting to the other people on the call with us. So. Again, if we're thinking about finding a spot in my home to have these calls, if I can find a good interior room that maybe will muffle some outside noises, so I may not be able to control when my neighbor is going to mow his lawn, but maybe I'm in an inner room or down in the basement that's going to muffle some of this out or, or maybe eliminate it altogether. But then the inside noise potentially could be a distraction for you. And then it could potentially spill over on the microphone as well. So get the pets and the kids out of the room and even some of the big people so they're not a distraction, so we don't hear background conversations. Uh, no background music. And I think, well, you may think, well, geez, Jeff, I don't turn on music when I'm on a call, but somebody in the next room over might. So just try to eliminate that. Again, that may spill over and be picked up by one of the microphones. And never forget, silence your phone. I've been interrupted by my own phone a couple times. It's kind of embarrassing. So just thinking about, you know, as we think about finding a good background, finding good lighting, all those come together in terms of also finding a place that allows me to hear and to be heard with a minimum of distracting noise and distracting sound. A couple of tips around this. The, the Probably the easiest and best way to improve the sound quality and reduce noise and background sound is just to get some earbuds or a headset or a microphone. A microphone still may pick up some of those sounds depending on how loud they are, but it may minimize that a little bit. Similarly to the way we talked about checking with your background and your lighting, do the same thing before you jump on a call with any of these virtual platforms and test your microphone and speakers. They, they almost always will allow you to do that. And, and did I mention, silence your phone, my friends. All right, let's do a quick pulse check. The I wanna see how we're feeling about what we're doing so far and see if there are any other questions. I do wanna go back to a question, I apologize, I we scooted past it before I had a chance to talk about it, about side lighting. Who had that question? Anybody wanna frame that as a question for me? Was that in chat, Jackie? Yeah. That's me, Alana. I don't know if you can see me, but um, my question was, I had two questions actually. So what about side lighting? And also I'm a person of darker complexion, as you can see. So I need a lot of light and I tend to, I'm an artist. I have a lot of photos in my house. Oh, wow. <laughs> 
So that's my other, I guess I'm gonna have to start using velour. I never really thought about that. And people have commented about my background a lot. Oh, did you make that? I'm like, yeah, uh, I just didn't think about it because it's always there. So yes, what about those kind of situations? Side lighting, background, and if you have a lot of artwork in your home. Permission to speak freely, sir? Yes, 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 sir. Permission? I'm a man. I'm like, yes, sir. <laughs> you have some side light on your left hand side that's actually casting shadows in on your right hand side. Lena, is that so? What I would suggest is find some, again, maybe it's a table lamp, maybe it's a desk lamp or a ring light, and, and put that directly in front of you, not right up close to you, but directly in front of you so that it it balances the light that you're that you're using. The um, okay, well, there you go. Well, there you go. How is that possible? Are you in front of a window now? Oh, and you're on mute. Sorry. I was actually sitting at a table and um, I just turned my chair around really, is what Simple I did. Stuff sometimes. Yeah, that yeah. was, because now your your face is, is fully and directly lighted mm -hmm. and there's still a little bit of shadows. What, mm -hmm. um, did you mind me asking, what are you using for a light source, Elena? It's just a basic lamp. It has two lights, one goes up, one is right at me. Oh, okay, okay. Well, you may want to play with that a little bit. That's so and that if I'm thinking what it is, you can adjust both up or down, can't you? I can adjust the up one, I can adjust the down one, though. Okay, and okay. that's what's facing me. Why well, say play with that a little bit? Does it have just a single bulb or not a three way bulb? It's a single bulb. Okay, well, maybe try a three way bulb, try moving it closer or back from you and just see kind of what creates a good lighting that highlights your features the way you want them to be highlighted. So <laughs> the, I will, the, actually when you post a question about side lighting, I'm mm -hmm. gonna show you, I've got, I'm in front of two monitors, but one of them is turned off. So my ring light is actually balancing the light. My other monitor is going to come on here in just a moment. It's actually not a bright, bright screen, but you may have noticed now that I have more light on this side. And so just to be, I had to be conscious of that. Oh, I probably need to turn that monitor off so that the light is balanced. So with side lighting, just like with direct lighting, think about you know how you can you manage it how can you create uh, a warmth of the image how can you reduce shadowing either on one side of your face or you know shadowing if the light is, is overhead now elaine you had another question as well or did we touch on that i have um yes. two additional questions oh okay um ring lighting uh, someone would like to note is ring lighting generally warmer and then the second part of elena's questions was um Suggestions for lighting of darker skin. And then one other question was, are there varieties of backgrounds available? So let's start with the last one. So backgrounds in terms of virtual backgrounds. I people, I think, I'm guessing that's questions deal, deals with. And yes, there are a myriad choice of backgrounds. Um, a lot of these platforms have their own backgrounds you can select from, virtual backgrounds, but there are some that you can buy on, on the open market, as it were. And it's just uh, so you can buy a package that may give you a choice of, you know, a uh, a very nice home or an office setting or something maybe a little bit more playful. So if you, again, you can create your own background, you can use the blur function with your own background, or if you want to use a virtual background, again, they're very, very common, very easy, very accessible to get to. To go back to the question about the ring lights, ring lights are becoming very, very affordable. We saw in an earlier slide, a woman with a, a ring light that looked like about three feet around. You can get some that will clip onto your phone, so about you know, four inches around. And, and the nice thing about ring lights is they all can be adjusted. So you can go brighter, you can go less bright. And so regardless of your skin tone, regardless of, of how you want to color yourself, I think a ring light is going to be very, very effective and allow you to, uh, to play with it until you find that right, that right tone and that right look and glow that you, that you want. We touch everything there, Jackie? Um, one other question just came in. How can you get backgrounds that don't cut off half of your head? Ah, okay. Let's uh, hang on to that question. Because I'm, I'm thinking that's not your background that's doing that. There may be something else at play. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. So hang on to that, Jackie. We'll come back to that. Okay. All right. Everybody feeling good? Everybody's got a pulse? You're okay with the pace? 
with my bad attitude, all these kinds of things. All right. Hearing no objections, let's move forward then. So let's talk a little bit about the next chunk, camera angles and shot composition. That is basically how you set the camera to you and how you orient it to your, your face and what you want to show, and then how you create the shot that's, that people are seeing. And so there's some tips and tricks that we'll talk about for each of these as well. So remember, the camera is your friend. Now, we there are lots of different ways, things, types of cameras that we have. So webcams or webcams out there. Most laptops these days have a built-in camera on the monitor, the flip-up monitor, tablets, phones, all of these devices have a camera built into them, many of them do. So the trick to remember is you want to position the camera to eye level or maybe even slightly above, not just the laptop, but the camera. So you need to think about where the camera is. If the camera is too low, then we're looking up your nose, but also it tends to highlight wrinkles, and double chins, and, and it becomes kind of a distraction. If the camera is above high level, too high, and, and Jackie, as you see, is kind of demonstrating this, that kind of makes you look a little smaller, kind of diminishes your presence. So ideally, what you, and we'll talk about this in a moment, is you want to have kind of the, the newscasters composition, kind of what we call the mid-torso shot. One of the tricks that I've had to learn, and I suspect many of us are learning this, is the tendency is to want to look at your screen, particularly if you're on a laptop with the camera on the monitor. You want to look at the people. You want to look at yourself. But it's it's a more difficult but kind of a habit to, to create is to look at the camera. Your peripheral vision will give you a little idea of, of who's on the this call with you. And so the my monitor is on my left. My camera is directly ahead of me. I can still see a little bit of what's on the monitor. I can take a sideways glance every once in a while as well. So try to look focus on looking at the camera. I'm using a webcam now and actually has two little blue lights that kind of circle the camera itself. So that makes it easy for me to find the camera and just to, to focus on that. Some tips and tricks, some script notes. Um, you may have to get creative. Oh, again, thinking about where is the camera? on this device that I'm using. So you saw with that the Jeff Studio, his makeshift studio a little bit ago, I found a music stand and just basically flattened the stand itself. And then I put my laptop on that and then raised or lowered the music stand so that the camera was eye level. You can, if you have a music stand available or boxes or, or uh, uh, books, or here's a handy little trick. You may recognize this as a metal large kitchen drainer, dish drainer. This, I stumbled across this. Somebody said, well, hey, why don't we grab that? Because I was looking for something to raise my laptop. And it was pure genius. I can't take credit for it, although I probably will. If you turn this over, you can use the top part to rest the laptop. I don't know if you can see there's some little feet on this, because ordinarily it would be sitting like this. And, and it's perfect. It gives me about six inches off of the desktop. Um, it was cheap. It was probably eight, ten dollars, something like that. It actually it was nice because I've got little slots for my mail, my notes and all kinds of things. So it was an even better choice than I anticipated. So you get creative. Again, nobody can see what you're putting your laptop or your camera on. So it's just, uh, you know, it doesn't matter what it looks like to you as long as you've got the image that you want. And th did I mention look at the camera, not the screen? I think I probably did. By the same token, we'll not only want to be aware of where the camera is and make sure that's eye level, but we also want to think about the shot that we're composing, the camera shot that we're composing. So a mid-torso camera shot, typically what you see on a newscast, a television newscast, is a good all-purpose camera angle. It allows us to see all of your features. It allows us to see a little bit of your body. It also allows us to see that background, which of course at this point you, you've uncluttered and composed very, very well. A full face shot is typically not very good unless you're you know, on a call with your dentist. But try to give something that gives, creates a little bit of space, allows us to see maybe the upper portion of your torso. And also be aware of headroom. Headroom is basically the space between the top of your head and the screen. And so you want a little bit of headroom. Jackie's giving, showing us an example of way too much headroom. And so she needs to adjust her camera down 
to give herself a little bit of Now she's just that too far and she's cut off her head. So the question earlier about a background that's cutting off my head, a virtual background, I'm wondering if maybe that isn't the camera angle. Maybe think a little bit about raising that camera or, or pulling the camera back a little bit so that you've got a little bit of headroom so you can see the, the top of your head. Now, one of the things I've noticed in, in Toastmaster speech contests, a lot of people are delivering their speeches still standing up. And that tends to, particularly on a tight camera shot, we tend to see rocking back and forth much more clearly than we would in a, in a live face-to-face -face setting. So one of the ways to maybe minimize your rocking back and forth or movement, basically to steady your image, is to sit at a chair. And sit at a chair without arms, but with a back. Now the rationale for that is if I have arms in my chair, my elbows are gonna find those arms, and now suddenly all my gestures are right here because my elbows are comfortable on the chair. So if I don't have chairs, uh, elbow, arms on my chairs, thank you for checking that out, Jerry, the, then that allows me to gesture naturally. Now I'm sitting at a desk and the desk is, is right about belly button high for me. So I can rest my hands there. It's very easy for my gestures to come up and gesture very naturally. And, and hopefully it's eliminated some of the rocking back and forth, maybe even fidgeting that, that I might otherwise do. So think about the shot that you're composing and frame yourself well so we can see a little bit of your background, again, uncluttered and, and neutral color, but still, ultimately, the focus is on you. All right, let's see where we are here. All right, how about a couple more experts? Jackie, anybody we can pick on now to critique this, this scene? Warren, would you like to give it a shot? Sure, now let's see, I mean, so and actually, Warren, we've got we've got three people here. Um, we've got the gentleman in the background in the yellow shirt who's got a uh, monitor, a large monitor in front of him. We've got a woman down in the lower right hand corner who has a, a large monitor with a blue screen on it. Now that we can see. And then we also have across the desk from her a woman in green who is using a smaller laptop. You can choose any of those, Warren, and give, give them a little bit of feedback. What would suggestions you would you have for them? Okay, the first one is to lay off the lower right okay. corner. The screen's got there's a screen glare. Okay. She looks like she's looking at the screen. Her face is blurred. Okay. And that's what stands out to me. And okay. yeah. How's the how's the camera height for her? Assuming that the, her camera's on her laptop there. What do you think about that camera height? Uh, it's off. I, she it looks like she's looking more towards the screen than looking up. Okay. Okay. So she may need to adjust her monitor, tilt it forward a little bit to tilt get it forward, to yeah. at high level. That's right. Very good. What else? What else do you notice, Warren? Well, let's see. From her? Or or the other two? Okay. The There's a comment on the back that the, 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 the guy, the man and the woman, you can, he's making the same gestures towards they're they're not looking at the camera they're looking at each other okay. look at the camera okay. i mean i mean if, if i'm the audience and they're talking to me it's like are you talking to me or are you talking to each other pay attention to the virtual audience okay okay and and finally the woman the the, the right-haired woman off into the left corner right there she is Looks like she has proper eye contact, but I can't really make out her expressions. And, she, and her hands just as are at the keyboard there. If she's making any gestures, they're not towards the audience. The audience can't see them. Okay, very good. Very good. Thank you, Warren. Who else? Other, other observations? Anybody else want to jump in? This is Nate Randall. Well, they're all sidelighted. Ah, good call. Good call. And I don't know who's on a Zoom call, but there's a lot of background noise from typing and talking. <laughs> good. Very good, Nate. So yeah, they've got a nice bright light off to their side, either to the right or their left. And you can see, well, we can see the woman in the lower right hand appears to have shadows on her left hand side because her window. Now the the, either the women might be able to turn their laptops or move around that desk so they've got the light directly in front of them. But again, it looks like it's pretty intense. And you made another good point. It's uh, look at the walls there. Not so much in terms of background, but they're hard walls. So you're going to get a lot of noise. And if I may be on a call, two other people may be talking or do something. And, and so noise can be an issue. 
suggestions. If I'm on a call, I'm in a noisy environment like this, what can I do? Um, wearing a headset will help. Okay, okay, very good. Anything That's else? Like I or using earbuds. Okay, exactly. With yeah. mic. Maybe find myself a different room. Let's go get a little conference room where I can get out of this, this hub up here. Very nice, very nice. Okay, well, good. We guys are getting it. I have so a question. You're, you're, Oh, go, go ahead, I have a please. question. This is Sherry, and I'm looking at the woman with the red hair. Okay. And because her, she's got a small laptop, I don't know that I think that top is pushed back enough, and you're getting a neck. You're 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 not getting a a good shot of her. I don't think. Oh, I think you're absolutely right. The actually, she probably needs to raise that laptop. Do you agree? So that the camera, the top of the monitor is at eye level. Now, right now, she's looking down on the camera. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Because I think that you're just getting, you know, from the chin up, probably. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. So she's got to play with that a little bit. Raise the, the laptop, first of all, and then adjust that, that monitor until she's got a good camera angle. Good, good, good observations. Great observations. All right. You guys truly are the experts. All right. There's a couple more pieces I want to touch on before we finish here. I want to talk a little bit about clothing and accessories. So, you know, we, we've talked about background and lighting and sound and camera angles and, and composing the shot. All these things interplay with each other. And now we're talking about how I present myself individually and personally. So there's some things to be aware of around clothing. Ultimately, and we mentioned this early on, we saw some nice examples in, in, that we looked at earlier. Where some clothing is going to separate you from the background this will allow you to stand out so you make good clothing choices now there are some things you need to be careful of with certain fabrics and you can see some of the list here some of you may have seen people that wear a very narrow striped shirt and it creates waves i mean it's very difficult to see it's hard to focus that's called the moiré effect um, I know you've got that, that beautiful velvet suede outfit that you like to wear, but it's going to look pretty darn muddy on camera. So, so just be aware of the, the fabrics that you choose, some of the colors that you choose. Probably your safest bet is just a solid color or something that uh, uh, you may have a, a, a print, but that the camera wouldn't necessarily be able to pick up the fine tunes of that print. So it's, it's, again, you have control over that just like you have control over the background that you're utilizing, you're creating. And so just be aware of the, the fabrics and the clothing that you're using. Think also about some of your accessories. You know, I'm a, I love big jangly bracelets and billowy sleeves, but they can be potentially distractions for me because I'm you know, trying to pull up my sleeves or if I'm banging my head up my, my hand on my desk and my bracelets are jangling with me as well. So just kind of be aware of that. Okay, here's some bonus stuff. No extra charge. This is free of charge for you today. The one of the things in, in public speaking, I'm a great fan of movement, using movement, intentional, purposeful movement to indicate transitions in a speech. So if I'm transitioning from my first point to my second point, I may take a step or two to the right and hold that spot. And that signals it's a visual cue to my audience, something's changing. Now you're thinking, well, geez, if I'm sitting, I can't do that. But I think you can just, and you can do that. You can convey movement, just even maybe with a slight shift in posture. So I just, I didn't know if you could tell, I kind of shifted my shoulders. I'm still looking directly at the camera, but then maybe I shift back for my next transition. If you're standing, so think about the, the competitions, the speech competitions. If you're standing and on camera, it's, it's hard to move to and from the audience, to and from the camera. So try moving laterally instead, but always be aware of keeping yourself in the shot. Also remember, and I saw this a couple different times in a recent contest, the when you are moving closer to the camera, you're also moving closer to the microphone. So you need to adjust your volume accordingly. The I've seen people use the kind of the, the lean in face thing. And at first it was guys kind of, I was kind of leaning back when I saw that, but I think that can be used effectively kind of for dramatic effect. Maybe it, it creates some intimacy uh, kind of inside. Well, just between you and me, you might say, as you lean towards the camera, you may want to emphasize a point or I had a speaker in my club that wanted to show off a uh, 
competition ring and he held it up to to the camera um so you know obviously make sure it's intentional ultimately make sure that you're in the screen and again then get back to that point where you're well composed all right We've covered a lot of ground. You guys uh, picked up some great information. I heard you, you were kind of debriefing and looking at some of those examples, things that were set up well, things that might be improved. The um, questions, I think we have time maybe just for a couple of questions. Do you, should you wear headphones or no? Headphones. Headphones, you can, certainly. The, uh, we mentioned that's a nice way to maybe block out internal noise so that you can focus and you can hear. Um, you know, if, if you've got a good speaker system and a good microphone, I don't think it's necessary, but, but there's certainly nothing wrong with these, now, particularly like in a business meeting. I've seen a lot of people that wear headphones. And, and again, I think maybe they're blocking out noise where they are, but it also just helps them hear better. So there's absolutely nothing wrong with the headset. But as far as, far as presenting yourself, as looks your looks does that takes away from it or um i don't think so uh i think we're used to that now uh, are you thinking about when you're delivering a presentation where yes you head? yes i would uh look, my, my gut reaction is make sure it doesn't have a cord on it or else you're going to get your head snapped back if you try to move too far from wherever it's, it's connected to your computer the if it helps you i i think it's probably okay the, for a presentation, you may not need it. I mean, you've practiced it, you've rehearsed it, you've, you've you know, taken time to figure out the volume of speaking and, and varying that. Uh, but I think people are used to it at this point. So I think it's probably a, a personal preference. Thank you. Yeah, Jeff, is this too bold of a color and stuff to put on something like this as a professional? The, that is bright, Willie. It gets your attention. The, what suggestions would you have for Willie's, Willie's clothing? With that background, your clothing. It should be contrasting always. Like uh, Billy has a blue and gray, and yourself, Jeff, you have a beige and blue. Contrast right. shows up good. Yeah. So I would I would say Willie, maybe a, that background's good. It's it's bold. It's right there. I'd say maybe lower your camera a little bit so you have a little less headroom. So we see a little less that background and then think, yeah, there you go. There you go. And then think about maybe a lighter colored shirt. You know, you could maybe have something with some, some big grid lines on or something that might break up the, the solid color of the background. But yeah. I think adjusting that camera angle. So you fill up more of the screen and then thinking about your clothing choice would be good. Thanks, sir. I appreciate you right, just to give you some feedback. Two more questions that um, yeah. one of them is how to uh, tips for darker complexions. Well, I think it goes back to if you can get a ring light and, and just play with the temperature of the light and see what, what complements you the most. Or if you have a table lamp or a desk lamp or a table lamp or a floor lamp, just kind of adjust the, the, the through the bulb and the distance. It's just ultimately it's it's what you're comfortable with what you think colors you and brightens you the way that you want it to be and then one more is on reflections of glasses ah okay <laughs> the um then jackie and i had this conversation yesterday as a matter of fact the depending on where your light is it may be reflected in your glasses now i wear i wear cheaters and and i know that when i'm on screen i can't wear those because there's going to be the ring light's going to be reflected in that that in it itself can be a distraction for the for the others the um jackie if i can ask you a question put you on the spot those supposedly are are non-glare anti-glare glasses right, right? But we found that a ring light still showed up in those. So uh, again, you may have to, you know, you may just have to fall back on your vanity like me and say, I don't want anybody to see me wearing my glasses or, or just find some different ways. Uh, I mean, I can take light. my glasses off, but I can't. Well, yeah, that's so pretty close. <laughs> the, um, or maybe think about non-direct lighting. So we talked about side lighting. Maybe if I have two side lights that are evenly balanced, then there's not a direct glare from a light in front of me. But again, ultimately you're gonna to have to play with it. Okay. And actually that reminds me one other bonus tip while I'm thinking about it. Notice how I was gesturing there. When we gesture on camera, 
at what it seems like a normal distance from our body, our hands are huge. So when you're on camera, you really kind of need to keep the gestures close to your body. It feels real awkward. It doesn't feel very natural at all. <laughs> we're at the point where we're just kind of fine tuning your image and how you present yourself. Well, let me kind of wrap things up. We're, we're reaching the end of our time here. You guys have great questions. I appreciate the input you and the feedback that you had, not only for the images we looked at, but, but for each other as well and for me. Bottom line. Plan for the image that you want to project and then prepare for that. How do you want people to see you? What kind of presence do you want to have? And that may change from situation, situation to occasion to occasion, audience to audience. And then test your technology. If you can get ahead of it, we get a Zoom account and, and play with it a little bit, get a friend on a set up a meeting, get a friend, give each other feedback. Then when you go into a Zoom call, you've prepared. Even if you go onto another platform, you've done some preparation as well. And remember, I said this at the outset, you have absolutely no control over everybody else and how they present themselves on that call. But you do have an incredible amount of control on the image and the presence that you want to project. And so put some thought into it. Think about it ahead of time. How do you want to present yourself? What do you want to look like on the screen? And just even as we've talked today, uh, you guys get it. And I, I appreciate that a lot. All right, so we've reached the end of our time. I appreciate having all of you here. Again, the questions, the feedback, the input was tremendous. Jackie, thank you so much for your help through throughout this and, and Bob Heaton, our Zoom master. The There is an article that actually was the, the impetus for this presentation. Jackie, is it possible that we could put a link to that article in the chat? And I want to make one other offer here as well. If you would like a complimentary checklist, basically the things we walk through, background, lighting, sound, et cetera, et cetera, or would like and or would like a copy of this PowerPoint, you can email me at the address listed here, and I would be more than happy to send you those materials. And if you have any additional questions, I'd be glad to answer those or, or try to answer those for you also. Well, I believe that ends my time. Jackie? Bob, anything else before we close out? I don't have that article available to uh, add the links. So if you would like that article, go ahead and contact Jeff at jhanna5508 at msn.com. I thank you, Jeff, for interesting and well-presented information. Could you please type his email in the chat? Jackie's doing that right now. Well, again, thank you all so much. We had a good group here and some good discussion, and that always makes it a whole lot more fun for, for me. So all right, you. Jeff, thank you so much. And once again, just to summarize, this was Jeff Hanna, Lights, Camera, Zoom, Projecting Professional Presence on a Video Call. Thank you, everyone, for attending.